بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي وحبيبي ونور قلبي وثمرة فؤادي طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الهاديين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا صدق الله العلي العظيم إباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I would like to thank Almighty Allah who has given us another opportunity to live and see another day when He decided to take the life of others today. Brothers and sisters, when you look around the globe, there are so many people who went to bed like you and I, but they didn't wake up like you and I. There are people in the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the opportunity of life. They live in like you and I. But Allah didn't give them the opportunity of health like you and I. They live in, but they're sick. But Allah chose to give you health. That is something to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On top of that, brothers and sisters, there are other people also. Allah gave them life, they are healthy. But Allah did not give them the tawfiq to come to the house of Allah to perform this wajib. But Allah chose you and gave you that tawfiq to come and perform this wajib. That is something to thank Allah. Brothers and sisters, not only that, there are so many blessings of Allah. If we are to think about them, we cannot count them. Because Allah says so in the Quran. Allah says, my blessings are uncountable. That is why we have to thank Allah all the time. Brothers and sisters, also not only to thank Allah, lest each and every one of us look around himself or herself to see if he or she is doing what he's supposed to do. Let each and every one of us remember that everything we do, Allah is watching and he sees and he will hold us accountable. And that's what taqwa is about. Every Friday is watching to remind one another about taqwa. One of the mandatory acts of Imam is to remind us about the taqwa Allah. That every, way, every Friday we have to remind ourselves that everything that I do, I should notice that somebody is watching. And not only he's watching, he will ask me about everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى Another ayah in Surah Luqman, Allah said, Don't worry about the place of the act. يَا بُنَيَّ إِنْ تَقُوا مِثْقَالَ عَبَّةٍ مِّنْ خَرْدَلٍ فَتَقُنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ My son, don't worry about the place in the heaven and the earth. Anywhere the action took place, I said, don't worry, Allah will bring it to your attention. And you know what is amazing? Al-Quran, يُفَسِّرُ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضَهُ How would Allah bring the action? يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Nobody would like to see his own action. That is why the Quran, Surah Al-Zalzalah, I say, لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Look in tafsir. In Arabic, there is different between لِيَرَوْ and لِيُرَوْ لِيَرَوْ To see willingly. He want to see it. But لِيُرَوْ is there. 
And the eye that Allah used, not liyaraw a'mal, not liyuraw a'malahum. So they will be made to see their own action. You all want to don't want to see that action. That is why we have to be careful, brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to give up taqwa. Brothers and sisters, the ayah that we are going to discuss in this khutbah is in Surah Al-Ahzab. The second to last ayah of Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the creation and the human being as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah said there are three creations. Of all the creations, Allah mentioned three of them. And he said, those three creations, I, Allah, I said, I presented the responsibility to them. What are those three creatures that Allah presented the responsibility to them? The ayah says, as samawat The seven heaven, all of them in combined, Allah said, we presented to them a responsibility. One, number two, wala ard and the earth as well. Number three, wal jibal, and so as the mountains. Three, the heavens, the earth, the mountains. Now what happened? What Allah presented to them? The answer, according to Allah, Allah said, فَأَبَيْنَ أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَا Allah said, they refuse. Here I want you to think about brothers and sisters. The word that Allah used, the word فَأَبَيْنَ Meaning they rejected, they said no to Allah. But the same word is used when Iblis said no to Allah too. But the difference is that Iblis didn't get away with that. When he says no, Allah said get out of the heaven. Right? But the heaven, the heaven and the earth and the mountain, they say no too. But Allah didn't say get out of the heaven. Right? Now what's the difference? See, the word Allah used see, for, for, for Iblis, the word also was used. But Abba was takbar. Abba said no. But the Satan, he said no. Allah said, Fakulna Okruj. We told him, get out of the heaven. But the same Fa'abain, the three of them used the same thing. But Allah didn't say no to them. Why? That is the Fir al Quran, the Quran. You see how the words are used in the Quran. The ulama they said the difference between the two, which is the Iblis and the heaven and the earth and the mountain they said the different is the responsibility are two kinds meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran sometimes he tells his servant I want you to do this and sometimes he tells them no, I want you to do this, but it's in the form of advice, not an order. That is called Al Amr Al Irshadi and Amr Maulawi. Al Irshadi is like a doctor when the doctor tells us a, a patient, do not eat sweet. For example, don't eat. If I eat the sweet, am I getting a ticket to go to jail? Of course not. Now if the police say don't run a red light and you run a red light, do you get a ticket or not? Yes, you get it. No, they both say don't. Don't run the red light, don't eat sweet. But don't of the first one, you don't get any punishment. That the second one you get the punishment because the first one is an advice. The second one is an order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he told the shaitan, it was an order, amr mawlawi. That's what I want. But when he told the angel, and when he told the heaven and the earth, that was an advice for them. And that's why they were allowed, they can go against the whole of Allah. The same thing like among the servants of Allah. You know, when Allah wants to choose somebody to be a prophet, there are two kinds. Sometimes they tell somebody, you have to, I want you to be a prophet. And then they surrender, they accept it. Sometimes he gives some people option. Would you like to be a prophet? One of them is, according to Tafsir, one of them is Luqman. The ulama who goes that Luqman was not a prophet. They said he was offered to be a prophet. And then he told Jibreel, 
Is this an advice or is it an order? Jabrail said, no, it's an advice from Allah. And then he said to Allah, to Jabrail, if it's an advice, tell Allah, I don't want to give up. Brothers and sisters, you know the difference between this and the others, sometimes we fight each other about the center. Who's going to be the person? Huh? We take one of them to court. Who's going to be the president of a center? Right? You know why? This is because we don't understand what is called responsibility. We don't understand what is called accountability in front of Allah. Now, Luqman, because he understood when he became a prophet, what will be, that mean? That he has to answer Allah for every individual of his followers. And he saw that that's too much for him to handle. He said, Ya Allah, I wouldn't like to be a prophet. Then Allah asked, What would you like to be? What would you want? What do you want, Ya Luqman? Luqman said, Ya Rab, if you ask me what I want, I will tell you I want a wisdom. Allah. The wisdom. Hikmah. Allah said, Don't worry, Luqman will give you hikmah. The narration said that he went to sleep. As he was asleep, Allah told Jabrail, Go and run wisdom from his head to toe. Allah covered him with, 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 with hikmah. And Allah said to us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Now, brothers and sisters, Jimmy, just, let me just emphasize, what is the hikmah here? Now, when Allah said hikmah, in one of the ayahs in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَكَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا Now, listen to the Quran's words. Allah said, Ya Kabir, if we give somebody a hikmah, Allah said, we give him a lot of khair. Now, what is the, what is a lot to Allah? When Allah said Kabir, what does it mean? To understand the Kabir of Allah, let me go to the Quran and see. What Allah say a letter, Allah says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءٌ قَلِيلٌ The entire universe, right? The heaven, the earth, the human, the animal, the nature, the everything. Allah said, they are qaleel. That's qaleel to Allah, right? Now look at the kabir to Allah. What would that be? If the heaven and everything in the world, Allah said, to me, they are something better. And the same Allah comes to the same Quran to describe kabir Allah. And he said, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَلْ حِكْمَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا That tells you, al-hikmah is not a joke. But that's not the point, brothers and sisters. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants to offer this responsibility to Luqman, he declined. He said, no, I don't. And he left. Now, the heaven and the earth, they were also given that opportunity. They say, no, ya Allah. And then Allah said, wa ashfaqna minha. Here comes the difference between al-aba, the rejection of Iblis, and then these two. Allah said, ashfaqna minha. Al-ishfaq in Arabic, is to deny something politely, respectful. That was not what the shaitan did. Shaitan, when he said no, it was out of the arrogance. But Allah said, these creatures, when they say no, it was out of respect. But Allah said, insan. But human being, he came forward. The responsibility that the heaven and the earth and the mountain rejected, human being, you and I, we came and we carried it. He carried it on his shoulder. And then Allah said, It's very, very unjust person. When? When he did not carry that responsibility the way he should. He will do injustice to himself. And then also, Jahulah. Ignorant. If he takes that responsibility correctly, is is ignorant about the blessings that this responsibility will bring. <clears throat> now the question: What is that responsibility that Allah put in front of these three that they rejected? The Quran says, "Al amana." Amana is trust. Allah said, "We presented this trust to them, and they rejected." But the human being came and accepted. Here, yeah, what is the amana? That is what I just wanted to emphasize. What is the meaning of amana in Islam? In Arabic, when we say the word amana, it's a trust. And normally it happens between two people. I come and said, I have this money. I want you to keep it for me. I'll come back and get it later. That is called amana. Between the two people. 
something that you share with one another and you ask one person to make sure that he takes care of it is called a man, a trust. Allah said that is the trust that we wanted the heaven and the earth and the mountains combined and they rejected. But what is the amana that Quran is talking about? Here our Mufassirin, they have different opinions. As to what is the amana that Allah is talking about? Here some scholars, they say al amana in this, in this ayah is about wajibat. Fasting, prayer, hajj, zakat, all these are considered al-amana that Allah has put on the shoulder. Which Allah wanted the three of them to take and they, they couldn't. That's tafsir one. Tafsir number two, they say no. They say al-amana that Allah is talking about is not wajibat. It is, it is Quran al kareem And you know what? There is some also something that also support these words. Because when you go to Surah Al-Hashr, Allah stated, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلْ Now one of the three that Allah said is Jibal, mountains. Allah said the Quran, if we are to reveal it on the mountain, لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِئًا مُتَسَدَّعًا This is one of the things that Allah has presented to the heaven and the earth and they couldn't carry its Quran. And you know what that Quran was given to us? And what do we do? We push it aside. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّقَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا The Quran was given and we push it aside. That's tafsir number two. Tafsir number three, they say no. What Allah meant with this amana is al-aql. The internet. That Allah wants to give to the heaven and the earth and the mountains. And they saw the significance of aql. They can't handle it, so they reject it. Some scholars say, no, that is not what it is. They said, the amana is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is from Allah Taba Taba in Tafsir Mizan. They say, the amana that Allah spoke about, and this is not anything other than the word La ilaha illallah. Because you know, brothers and sisters, this word, the hadith of the Prophet says, Khafifatan. Khafifa is so easy on the tongue. Thaqilatan fil mizan. But if they put it on the scale, Yom al Qiyamah, nothing is heavier than these two sentences. This word, La ilaha illallah, is the word, is the most, the most powerful sentence in the Quran. And there are three kinds, right? One of them is La ilaha illallah. The other one, La ilaha illa huwa. The third one, La ilaha illa anta. And these three words, please don't play with them. You know in the Quran, Allah SWT talks about Sulaiman Yunus alayhi salam when he was in the stomach of the whale. Allah said, my wish is for him to stay there till the day of judgment. But Allah said, he made a call. Fanada fi dhulumat. He made a call, like 911. What was the call? Subhanaka la ilaha illa anta. That's the call that he made to Allah. Fastajabna la. That sentence was able to change the decision of Allah and Allah stated. Our decision is Yunus to stay there till the day of judgment, not to come up. But Allah said, when he called with these sentences, La ilaha illa ant, Allah said, we can't say no to him and not to any creature when he or she calls us with this sentence. That is the amana that Allah SWT presented to this. Number four. This is al amana that Allah spoke about as is called al wilaya al Wilaya, the leadership of Allah SWT that Allah presented to them. And when they saw how significant this wilaya is, they said, we can't take it. And they surrender. They left. That is some of the history. But some of the scholars they say, no, amana that Allah spoke about is even beyond that. Because one, we have amana al madi and we have al amana al ma'no. Two kinds of uh, 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 al amana. One al madi, material amana. I give you something to keep. I'll give you a book, a Quran, a house, a car. This is called amana madi. There is the second one is called al amana al ma'no. Spiritual amana. 
and one of those amana madi it can be a, a money, a house, a car. But more beyond that, brothers and sisters, our scholars, they say amana is even more than that. They say one of the amana we, we normally ignore, we don't even think about, is that a amana also is between a husband and wife. Meaning, a wife in the hand of her husband is an amana that Allah has put in your hand. That Yom al Qiyamah Allah will ask you as a husband, how did you treat your wife? How did you take care of her? Allah has put her in your hand as a test and trust of Allah. So you have to be careful how you treat her. You have to be careful how you take care of her. You have to be careful about how you live with her because you have to answer Allah Yom al Qiyamah. And the same thing also opposite. A wife, your husband is amana in you. Yom al Qiyamah Allah will ask you, how did you take care of her? Not only that, your children are considered amana as well. The children that Allah gave me, it's not just I have them and that's it. No, they are Allah's trust. That is why Yom al Qiyamah Allah will ask you, how did you raise them? How did you name them? How did you give them the teaching of Islam? How did you give them the teaching of Quran? This are all is your responsibility. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum now. You are the trust in your hand. Not only the brothers and sisters. Al-Amana go even more than that. Your neighbor is your Amana too. See, sometimes we forget about these things. Your neighbor is Amana. Allah will ask you your Muqtiyah. How did you treat your neighbor? It doesn't matter. Muslim, Kafir, it doesn't matter what they believe. They are still your responsibility. Who is the neighbor? In the narration they says, there are 40 houses on your right side, 40 houses on the left, and 40 in the front, and 40 at your back. They are all your responsibility. Yom al Qiyamah, Allah will ask you. The Prophet emphasized on the neighbors more than anything that even Imam Ali, when he spoke, he said, La zala Rasulullah, you was seen bil jiran, hatta vananna bi annahu sayuwarrituhum. The Prophet emphasized about neighborhood, neighbors, neighbors. He said, We thought at one point the Prophet will make them to inherit when we die. That is why. The prophecy, Laysa minna man bata shab'an wa jaruhu Any Muslim who goes to bed, his stomach is full, but the neighbor is hungry, I say, it's not one of us. Now, how many of us know our neighbors? One question. How many of us know our neighbors? Sometimes we live in the neighborhood 10 years, 50 years, I don't even know somebody who's the next door. Islam emphasizes about the importance of neighbors. Not only that, Aman al Ma'na we also brothers and sisters. Is that everything that Allah has given us in one of the tafsir, they say the Prophet also is Aman. The children of the Prophet, they are Aman in our hearts. Also that we will be as of them. Now all this amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about, brothers and sisters, how are we in front of Allah? Am I taking good care of this Amana? If I am, Alhamdulillah. If I'm not, it's something to think about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to take care of Amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Ya Allah, we ask you every single day, help us to see your Amana among us and treat them the way you want, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr inna l-Isana l-Fi khus illa l-Ladhina amanu wa amilu s-Salihat wa tawasaw bil-Haqqi wa tawasaw bil-Sabr. فناتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وبنا عذاب النار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله بارك الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على حبيب المستفى بالقاسم محمد على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الهاديين المهديين الذين غاب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد. Brothers and sisters, in the references as we spoke about the aman of Allah subhanahu wa taala, according to some of the scholars, one of those aman of Allah upon us is the grandchildren of the Prophet too. 
that the prophet, in many cases, he emphasized the importance of his grandchildren. One of those grandchildren that I wanted to spend some two minutes or three minutes to talk about him is about Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. As it mentioned that we are in the good days of his shahada and his matrimony. His great personality is known everywhere that you go among the Muslims. But just to give us a little background about who is Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, and the lineage of the Prophet, you can say he is the sixth generation after the Prophet. That after the Prophet's death, the generation those came, the sixth generation is one of them is Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. And his grave is in, next to the grave of the Prophet in Baqiyah. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq was known as one of the great scholars of his time that he established in Medina. And he got students from across the world. They all came from different parts of the world to come and study different fields. That in his class, the narration stated, he gathered almost 4,000 scholars learning different subjects from Imam Jafar Sahib. Allahu Akbar. One of the great scholars whom we are proud of them today, one of them is Imam Abu Hanif. He's one of them. Another one is Imam Malik. Imam Malik, in his own words, when he described Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, he said, he said, ma ra'aytu rajulan atqa wa a'lamu min Ja'far. He said, I never seen a man who is more pious and knowledgeable than Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. Imam, Imam Malik, he said, he said, anytime I feel, any, I feel tight in my heart, I feel like distancing myself from Allah, at this time, he said, I go and look at the face of Ja'far and it brings me closer to Allah. You know what, brothers and sisters, just this just, just word of Imam Malik, you know what that means? In Imam Ja'far, Imam, Imam Malik wants to tell you and I that you should have a spiritual doctor. You know, all of us, mashallah, we carry our doctor's card in our wallet. Anytime I feel something, I call. Anytime I feel like I'm not feeling well, I call my doctor to, to make an appointment. But nobody has any spiritual doctor's number. The only time we have the number is when we're not sure tomorrow is eight or not. So we make those calls, right? Because we want to make sure that this eight or not. That number, we have that. But throughout the year, no, I don't care. Who cares, right? Now, Imam Malik, he says, my spiritual doctor is Imam Ja'far. That I always go to see him. And when I see him, he reminds me of Allah. Abu Hanifa was the same. And this Imam Malik, as we speak, is not, a, is not like any other scholar we think. Imam Malik is one of the great scholars in the Muslim world. Today, as we speak, if you go to North Africa, to the West Africa, majority of Muslims are the followers of Imam Malik. And this Imam Malik was the student of Imam Jafar Sahib. The same thing Imam Abu Hanifa. When you go to the Middle East also, Coming to even the Arab Gulf, also majority of the followers are also Abu Hanifa. And he also was the student of Imam Ja'far al That is this great personality. This Imam, alayhi salam, has shared his knowledge with the world in many fields. In every thought that you can think of, he has shared his knowledge with them. Peace be upon him on the day he was born, and peace be upon him on the day he died. And peace be upon him on the day he will be resurrected, inshallah. The last thing, brothers and sisters, is about our world of the day. The changes that is going on in the Muslim world is very sad. When you look about Muslim world starting from Afghanistan, to Iraq, to Palestine, to Sudan, to Syria, to every part of the Muslim world, what is going on, what was going on is very sad. But what we can say, is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace to this world, Ya Rabbi al -Hayat. Ya Allah, we ask you. There are, Muslim, there, are, there are people who are working for peace. Ya Allah, help them in that cause, Ya Rabbi al -Hayat. There are those also who are destroying the peace. Ya Allah, if they are capable of guidance, God. If they are not, Ya Allah, treat them what you know they deserve, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you. Help our Ummah to understand and unite, Ya Rabbi Ya Allah, show us the right path and help us to stay on the right path. 
Ya Allah, show us the wrong path and help us to stay away from it, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, do not end our life unless we are true servant of yours, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna atayna kal kawtar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ahli Muhammad. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر